if the international day for yoga which is on 21st at ari we are conducting a two day uh, celebration and under this we will be having talks today from yoga experts who have been invited to our institute to share their knowledge and expertise so with this i invite our experts and director sir to the dais so please uh, raise the dais shri kulkarni madam dr nestorgi nai I request our director to welcome Shri Kulkarni with a bouquet of flowers. Thank you. Can I give it? Yes. 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 I request our director sir to welcome Dr. Mayankali Nai with a with flowers. <laughs> Thank you, sir. With this, I also invite our director sir to please give his remarks on vocation of International Yoga Day. Uh, good morning. Today's uh, chief guest, Dr. Kulkarni sir, uh, Dr. Maithili Naik, all my scientists, friends, my uh, the staff members of ARI and students of ARI. A very warm welcome to you all on this auspicious occasion of International Yoga Day. Uh, it's very interesting to note that today Dr. Naik is here. As a, one of the speakers, she is the daughter-in-law of Dr. D. G. Nai, who was scientist and who worked for several years and contributed very significantly in organic chemistry division. And uh, his daughter-in-law today she is present. Uh, Mrs. Nai is also here, and I am very displeased. And I have told her this that Dr. Nai is not here. He should have been here when his daughter-in-law is giving such interesting lecture. And he is karma bhumi, and he is missing this occasion. But probably he would be able to see or enjoy the same on YouTube. Uh, the recording will be available courtesy to Dhananjay Boros and his team members. So, but you must convey my displeasure to Dr. Thai. I insist on that. So, it's, it's very interesting that we have gathered here to celebrate International Yoga Day. And uh, this occasion is also very interesting. Our Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Modi Ji, recommended uh, that International Yoga Day be celebrated on 21st of June. Uh, he announced that in the UN in the year 2040. And he chose this particular day, 21st June, and there is a lot of significance which is uh, associated with this. It is said that it is the longest day of the year, but it is most important uh, aspect of this day is uh, the sun completes its solstice and he starts the Shinayan on this particular day. Uh, so what is the significance of this part? So apparently it is said uh, in uh, our Vedic literature in Atharavid, the credit for invention of practicing yoga goes to Lord Shivji. And Lord Shivji used to practice this, but at the same time he used to practice Samadhi also, he used to practice all his yoga sadhana. And uh, there were a lot of people who were interested in learning this yoga sadhana from Shivji. And they all used to gather together, but Dr. Shivji I mean, would never, never be bothered about this. He would just continue with his yoga sadhana. But at the same time, there were seven people who stayed put. And uh, as some of the interesting facts are there, they stayed put for 87 years in front of him without moving anything. And those seven disciples were known as Saptarishis. And finally, Lord uh, Shiva once noticed that they were there. He opened his eyes and then he decided that he would teach them. And that particular day was uh, the first full moon day 
of the Dakshinaya, which is now followed by Allah first as Guru Purnima, and that was the day when this uh, yogic uh, sadhana was taught by Lord Shivji to seventh Rishi. Uh, there are several interesting facts about it. Uh, when Prime Minister Modi ji proposed that this International Yoga Day be followed on 31st of June every year, this is one of those rare occasions when this resolution was passed in the US without taking vote. It was unanimously passed and it was seconded by countries. And this particular yoga celebration was seconded by none less than 177 countries. And even till date, this happens to be a record. Not so many countries have gathered together to support any resolution in the UN. And this also is another interesting fact that all of them came together. This also shows the international interest in yoga. Many of us believe that yoga is the gift of India to world, and it is rightly so because probably no other country practices yoga as much as India does. But in the Christian culture, in Muslim culture, and in several other cultures, yoga is followed in different forms. There are different forms of it. In even in Yunani medicine, it has been recommended. In Christianity, it has been recommended. But they are all in different forms. And that is again very important that when people attribute uh, some religious anger to practicing yoga, it is so incorrect. It is a practice which has to be followed by as many of people as possible to keep their body healthy, to keep their mind healthy. And this is something which is an important message that our Prime Minister wanted to give to the world. And I believe one of us should take it in the right spirit and uh, follow it. I'm not expert on yoga, but I believe that we have been fortunate to have some experts who would be guiding us with importance of yoga. Dr. Kulkani is there, Dr. Naik is there. And Dr. Naik especially, she has been uh, a very uh, expert, I would say, because she is also a postgraduate doctor in Ayurvedic medicine. She has also obtained her post-graduation in Sanskrit, so which actually makes it a very right combination, Ayurveda and Sanskrit. Those who have understood the importance of Sanskrit and Ayurveda probably would give us the best that we want to learn from this particular important uh, occasion. So without wasting much time, I would uh, I understand that all of us are interested in eagerly waiting to listen to her and Dr. Kutkani. So I will not take much of your time. I thank both of them on my personal behalf that they have accepted our invitation and they have agreed to place the occasion. Thank you so much and thanks to you. All the best. Thank you very much, Director Sir, for enlightening us on the inception of Yoga Day and the spirit in which the International Yoga Day is being conducted. So it is my pleasure to introduce formally Dr. Maithali Nesargi Nayak and uh, highlight her accomplishments. Dr. Maithali Nesargi Nayak is Assistant Professor at Department of Swastha Vritta and Yoga, Tilak Ayurved, Mahavidyalaya, Pune. Dr. Maithili completed her bachelor's in Ayurveda, Ayurvedic science from Tilak Ayurved Mahavidyalaya, Pune. She completed her post-graduation also in Ayurveda, Swastha Vritta and Yoga. She obtained expertise from the University of Copenhagen on the concept and application of new Nordic diet. She is also the honorary consultant on a, honorary consultant of Ayurveda and Yoga at St. Shantarachan Ramana Charitable Ayurved Hospital and she has also worked in Pratham Clinic and Express Clinics as Ayurveda and Yoga consultant. She holds, as Sir mentioned, holds a master's degree in Sanskrit. Not only is she interested in various languages, she also speaks English, Hindi, Marathi, Sanskrit and German. So she is an accomplished polyglot and she is also interested in Anritya Visharad in Bharat Natyam. So Madam is highly accomplished. And she is also interested in traditional culinary techniques and we invite her to please give her talk. And uh, I would request Sri Kulkarni ji and Director Sir to please take their seats in the audience for better visibility. Ma'am, please. Thank you, Director Sir.
Namaste. Thank you, ma'am, for those kind words of introduction. It gives me immense pleasure to stand before a gathering of scientists and people working in various domains of science to talk to you all about that Shastra, which is the traditional knowledge of our nation, the Bharata Varsha. The topic for today is Yoga and Ahar for Holistic Living. Stress has been given to use the terminologies of Sanskrit literature rather than putting the words nutrition or diet for reasons that shall be enlightened in the course of talk. This is the prayer from the Ruga Ved. Om Samvachadvam Samvadhatvam Samvomanam Sijanatam Deva Bhagam Yatha Purve Sanjananam Upasate This has been decided to be the prayer of the common yoga protocol which we all shall be performing tomorrow on the International Day of Yoga. The theme is harmony. Our topic of holistic living is reflected through this theme of harmony being in unison and everyone striving to be perfect, not only for yourself, but for the society as a whole. We begin with pranams to the Patanjali Muni and Lord Dhanvantri, the two pillars of Yoga and Ayurveda, which are going to form the basis of this talk. I feel fortunate to have been trained in the Shastra and consider oneself to be very lucky to be a part of this nation and its system of knowledge and try to bring it to the people in this contemporary scenario. Yes, so what will be the entire layout of today's presentation? We'll be seeing about the concept of holistic living or holistic health. Then we shall be dealing about the concept of yoga, the concept of ahar, and how these are interrelated with each other. So, what is life? Ayurveda says life is an amalgamation of your body, mind and soul. Sharirendriya Sattvatma Sanyogo Dhari Jeevitam This amalgamation when it is held together, it is life. The part of it, the Atma, the Sattva, when they go away, we are no longer that life. Okay, now that we know that Sharirendriya Sattva Atma Sanyog is life, but when we are living on this planet, what is life? It is nothing but a group of desires. The first one being the Prana Eshana. The, the desire to be living, to be alive. Every creature wants to continue living. No creature has the innate desire to die off or exit this planet. The next is the Dhaneshana. Dhaneshana can be translated as the desire for wealth or any materialistic living that is needed for the sustenance of life. So it could be the form of food for lesser creatures and for us, food and any materialistic being that will help to live the life and a step ahead of it to have comfortable life. And the next Ashana desire is the Paralokeshana. In the traditional Indian system, rebirth is the concept that is definitely adhered to. This rebirth the cycle of birth and death when one is able to break through and attain that paraloka, that uttamat sthan, 
this desire is also there. Just like the imagery of this tree, when we plant a sapling, we want the plant to grow well. Not that later we want the plant to give us lovely fruits and flowers. And when that is there, we think that this should remain with us forever, maybe in the form of that own plant or through its saplings or offshoots. So this cycle of having to live and live comfortably and also think that this is my last birth and the last Hoga Yoni of this planet and I am going to attain this moksha is continuously there. Every vyapar, every thought process, every action, every deed of a human being goes through these three desires. This is there but all these eshana can only be followed or achieved in a good healthy body. So, the healthy body and mind are going to form our basis when we speak about yoga and aha. This holistic living comes not only through body and mind health, but how we conduct ourselves in the society, how the groups of people behave with each other, and whether it leads to worldly peace or certain conditions of war and unhappiness which we are currently going through. This righteous and non-righteous behavior is not only seen in the form of physical war or some dispute in the society, but the very sorrowful pandemic situation that we all went through where everyone suffered physically, mentally, in ways which can't be expressed. There is no way to avert it, but there are definitely ways to tone down the after effects and the losses that all of us have suffered. This is the aim of our holistic living. So, what is health? It is the state of complete mental, physical, social, spiritual, psychological well-being and not merely absence of disease or infirmity. This encompasses the entire framework of holistic living that we discussed. This definition as given by the World Health Organization is very much in tune with the definition of swasthya as it is given in the Sushirut Samhita. It says, Samadosha, Samagnishcha, Samadhatu Malakriya, Prasanna Atmendriya Manaha, Swastha Iti Abhidhiyate. The Dosha Dhatu Mala components of this definition are taken care of in the physical aspect. Prasanna Atma, Indriya and Mana can come in the framework of mental, social and spiritual well-being. When health is talked about or yoga is talked about as we are discussing now, merely performing a few asana or pranayam for the physical health isn't sufficient, but one has to delve into the details of other aspects of the yoga anga in order to have complete health. So, yoga shastra is that philosophical wisdom aiming to discipline oneself to live a content life and attain eternal bliss. If we see the three ikshana, praneshana, dhuneshana and paralokeshana can fall into this definition of being able to discipline oneself to live a content life and final aim is to attain eternal bliss. What is ahara? Ahara is that thing which is ingested through the mouth. Dravya galadha karanam, whatever is sent through down the throat is the ahara. It will comprise of both the solid as well as liquids that are going to be consumed. 
and not just these, but also the air that we inhale in. And I extend the definition to say that whatever thought processes, whatever actions, whatever deeds, whatever words that we subject ourselves to. This brings me to a concept in the Indian thought system about the Pancha Kosha. Taittiriya Upanishad gives five Kosha in which a human life is there. It is the Annamaya Kosha, Pranamaya Kosha, Manomaya Kosha, Vidnyanamaya Kosha and Anandamaya Kosha. Out of this, the Annamaya Kosha or the Sthula Sharir is visible to all of us. Our form our being, the, the whole Pancha Mahabhutatmak Sharir, the body that we possess, comes under the Annamaya Kosh. And further down, as we go through the sequence, the Kosh becomes Sukshma. Sukshma in the sense, they are subtle. The body is gross, the huge macro thing that is visible to the eye. And the, as we come to the Anandamaya Kosh, they become subtle to that level which can't be visible to your eye, but it is to be experienced. <laughs> so what is the rationale behind taking these two topics together of the yoga and ahara for holistic living? As you can see, the bigger circle is yoga, the subset of which is ahara. Because for the maintenance of good health, for the practice of yoga, specific type of ahar is also recommended for a yogi or the person who is onto the path of yoga. If we practice good health practices in the form of good ahar or diet and also adhere the principles of yoga, we will be in a win-win situation to be a yoga tandem to the fullest extent. This brings me to the core topic of yoga. Yoga, Atha Yoga and Shasanam is the first sutra of the Patanjali Yoga Sutra. This is in tune with the definition of yoga that we saw. Discipline oneself to live a content life. It is some kind of an Anushasan. It is that discipline that we ourselves put in our own lives for our behavior which is going to take us to the higher level of success, not only for worldly pleasures, but for that eternal being. Bhagavad Gita gives a beautiful sutra, Buddha Yogto Jahativa Ube Sukruta Dushkrute Tasmat Yoga Yujjaswa Yoga Karma Sukaushanam Most of us must be familiar with the last path of the sutra. Yoga Karmasu Kaushalam. This is used to advocate the thought process that yoga is not merely some philosophical thought process, but to be perfect in whatever work one is doing. The Karma Yoga. If I am supposed to write a few lines on XYZ topic, me trying to be perfect in that write-up is yoga. If I am supposed to dig something, a well here, I try my level best to dig that well properly. This mundane activities to the activity of looking after the patients. All things that come under the karma, that is your niyata, your decided job, work or activity. Trying to be perfect in this is advocated to this verse of Yoga Karma Shukaushala. But if we see the entire definition, it tells us that the person who is intelligent, who is, who is thinking about his life, will try to come out of all the deeds, whether they are giving him happiness, Sukha or Dukha, by doing whatever is told to him properly, and not remaining attached to it, getting away from it, not expecting any fuller out of it is yoga. You do your job properly and don't remain attached to it. That is again a bandha. 
the bandha of jnana is also to be got out of it is not that bandha is only about materialistic things it is also of those things that give either sukha or dukha and we have to come now the concept of ashtanga yoga this is the basis of pranayama and yoga that asana that all of us are familiar with let's see these ashtanga yoga and how they have a profound impact when used properly on the well being of the society the first anga of this ashtanga yoga is yama it comprises of ahimsa satya asteya brahmacharya and aparigraha as we all know ahimsa is non violence maybe through action deed or word satya adhering to that which is true asteya not trying to grab or get hold of something that is not yours brahmacharya is trying to break free from all materialistic pleasures it is not only of the body but of everything every materialistic aspect one is trying to maintain a balance of how much one is to use it that is necessary for sustenance and how much is luxury as we all know it is said that earth gives sufficient for air to suffice everyone's needs but not everyone's greed so it is to ourselves to introspect how much is my need and what is my greed at a parigraha a parigraha is the once again in tune with the concept of needs and greeds which says one should avert from collecting things a parigraha parigraha is putting together things a parigraha is not collecting or amassing thing this can range from wealth to some objects to even books to even certain things which we feel that i want it i am not able to define when i am going to put to use or how i am going to put to use i just know that i want it and i am making a collection of it this again leads to a bond so if we see these yama are about how one should behave in the society they are the rules of societal righteous conduct the next one is the niyama niyama comprises of saucha santosha tapa swadhyay and ishwar paridha if yama was about how one will behave in the society for having an amiable situation niyama comes to how one will behave for oneself there are about these principles are about personal health and hygiene shaucha is being clean or being hygienic santosh tells us about being content about what life life offers us but mind you not being complacent because complacence can also lead to laziness and give oneself to be away from the path of success so santosh is about being content tapa is about penance whatever branch of knowledge one chooses trying to be perfect in it swadhyay is another aspect of the same thing where one strives hard to work in the same branch of knowledge in through one's own self i don't want to blame x y z person for me not being able to do certain thing properly i am the one who is responsible for all the good and the bad things that are happening this swadhyay helps us to remind that and ishwar pranidhan is unconditional love or surrendering to that one concept of god here god doesn't have to be some force some idol it has to be that force which one acknowledges to be at a higher level than oneself 
being able to connect being able to become one with that concept is nothing but getting that eternal bliss so yama was about societal well being how people should behave amongst themselves niyama is about how one will behave with oneself because as it is said that you are your own constant companion niyama is about behavior with one own self and now comes the third anga the asana which all of us are very familiar with but before the practice of asana it is to be known that the sequence of ashtanga yoga asana and pranayama are the third and fourth anga which are preceded by yama nidha which when followed properly will help for the siddhi of asana and pranayama so at the end there will be a take home message about the entire lecture but now itself i would like to give you a small take home message to look at yoga beyond asana and pranayama and before asana and pranayama before asana and pranayama it is about the yama nidha and after asana pranayama it is what that shall be discussed afterwards it is said that thira sukham asana many times it is considered that being able to be comfortable sukha purvak in a certain position of asana which is beneficial for the physical self it relaxes the muscles it relaxes the mind and the body being able to be comfortable in that position for a considerable period of time is asana siddhi there is a subtle meaning to this word which which can be seen as sthira sukham asana being able to maintain sukha for a long time eternal sukha being able to have eternal sukha is asana and it is not that being comfortable in one position for a long time is asana for to begin with for the yoga sadhak but has to see the macro things first and then go down to the micro things but not just comfortability in a certain position in asana but being comfortable in your thought in the sukha for a prolonged period of time is asana the concept of pranayama it is said that shwasa prachwasa gati vichheda pranayama we are constantly breathing in and breathing out are we in control of what is happening if i am speaking here am i dedicating a certain amount of my thought process to breathing no it happens how does it happen there is this prana this is vayu that is taking care of my actions the both the involuntary and the voluntary ones so as the next shlok goes chale vaate chalam chittam nischale nischalam bhave yogi sthanatva aapnoti tato vayu nirodhi it is necessary to have control on your vayu on the path if one wants to have control over the mind mind is that force which takes us both in the part of positive thought process or it can take us to that darkest core of sadness which nobody would ever thought of and it is said in marathi mana chinti te vairihi na chinti at the same time whatever positive that the mind can think it is only that speed that depth of thought process which the world can catch up with it means that our mind is not still it is constantly in a process of thinking it is in the constantly in certain state of turmoil it is constantly worried about the future or the past or some abstract thing which need not necessarily be in the present and this is the basis of all thought if we want to keep the mind and body healthy one must have control over the mind 
control over the mind can be achieved with a proper control over the vata in the body. And hence prana ayam, wherein one tries to control the prana in such a way that it will help the mind and the body to calm down and come to a state of equilibrium. Because constant turmoil, constant trying to keep up with what is happening around is inevitable. So again, sthula, the macro aspect is about the breathing techniques that help oneself to keep your body healthy, maybe to take care of a few diseases as well. And the sat aspect is about trying to keep the mind in equilibrium for the relaxation of both the mind as well as body. Pratyahara is the fifth concept. As we said, we are thinking about yoga beyond asana and pranayama. The first beyond destination of us is pratyahara. As we know, five senses, the sight, smell, taste, touch and hearing are the ones through which we are there in contact with the society or with other people. In Ayurveda, a terminology is given to them. They should be our slaves, not we their slaves. If I'm not able to control my urge to watch movies for the duration in a day, I am becoming a slave to not only the movie or certain video, but through my indriya. The I is the Indriya Adhishthana and the sight, my vision, the power to see things and get it translated into what is there in my brain is the Indriya. So, Indriya when they remain in our control is Pratyaha. And not just these five, our Mana is the main Indriya which facilitates the work of these five indriya. Now we know that these five indriya, vata and mana are to be held together. These when in unison can definitely help us in gaining good knowledge, in remaining happy, in keeping every other people, every other person around us happy. But at the same time, they can be very bad masters if we fall prey to them. If we see in the current scenario, all the crimes that are happening are because of people not being able to have these indriya in control and want to have unbridled joy through the use of these indriya. These are just the jnanendriya, there are five karmendriya and the vyadmakman, which in all level indriya which govern our body and as I said, if we let them be our masters, it is going to lead to our downfall. But if we make them our good slaves, they are the ones who are going to help us to lead a beautiful life on earth. After all, it is not just about the life that is going to keep it us in some bandhana. Life is so beautiful. If you see any kala, any art form, or for all of us sitting here, some new molecule that we are able to deal with, some new process that we come across, it gives us joy. So life is definitely wonderful, but if we try to remain in that joy, it is going to be a bandhana for us. So this was about Pratyaha. Dharana, it is Desha Bandha Chittasya Dharana. Now a serious aspect of yoga begins from here. Dharana is about concentration, to be able to concentrate on whatever is happening. So much so that one forgets about his or her surroundings and becomes one with whatever the person is doing. Many a times dharana and this dhyana are considered together in a concept called as meditation that all of us are familiar with. Being able to concentrate and to be able to put that concentration to a level where it is unbreakable. Tatra ekatanata dhyanam. 
उद्देशबंध चित्त धारणा इट इज कंटिन्यूड एज ध्यान द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज नॉट ओनली वेन यू आर क्लोजिंग यूर आईज एंड थिंकिंग अबाउट द Why, oh, the voices that are controlling you, because many a times it is the guided meditation that we know, but it is about each and every possible action or deed that we do. Summing up about dhyan and dharana, we once again go back to that definition where we want to excel and remain excellent in every thing that is assigned to us. This, if it is done. while you are closing your eyes and thinking about your body and shuasta is dharana and dhyan respect and here comes the last aspect that is samadhi samadhi if we utter the word it gives us the feeling of we being some saints seers like nyaneshwar maharaj tukaram maharaj etc but each one of us can also enjoy the samadhi of attaining eternal bliss if we are righteous in all our thoughts and conducts i think this word of righteous conduct is seeming to be a legal cliche but in current scenario it helps us to reiterate our own faith in a good being there are so many aspects we see in the society so many crimes so many sorrows which could make our belief in behaving well in striving for intellectual perfection in striving for good interpersonal ties it can help it can cause our belief to shake this third aspects of yoga and talks like these help us self to go back and reinstate that faith and this is nothing but that eternal bliss of samadhi here we come to the end of the topic of yoga now we have aahar for yoga in order to bridge the gap between yoga and aahar first small topic that i thought i would share was about aahara for yoga that is told mitahara is concept that is told in yoga as well as ayurveda it can be translated as having food in moderation mita is being moderate and aahara is food being able to consume food in moderation is the key Many a times, people who are on strict diet are also told, "Ab sab kuch kar sakte ho, sir portion ke baad dhyan rakhna." That gives the feeling of being able to eat properly. At the same time, not just being alive to eat. This is the prime concept about ahara that is told in yoga as well as ayurveda. We are here. We are there to eat to sustain your life. It is told that ahar is the prana, and one eats food to sustain that prana. Today, we all do the opposite way. We live to eat. It's not that we are. We should attain that feeling of. not wanting to live in this world where we just go dig some tubers and have them. No. we are exposed to various culinary traditions in the world more so in the today's globalized era even i confess to being explorative in the culinary field but if it is consumed in moderation with the thought that i'm eating for the good health of my body and for me to sustain myself on the planet and not to eat only and use the planet for my happiness to tickle my taste buds it is mita ahar in bhagavad gita the satvik ahar is told in the form of ayu sattva bala rogya sukha priti vivarhana rasya snigdha sthira rogya ahar satvik priya in a gist that food which will give us good nourishment which is Uh, 
soft one could say or have that feeling of comfort which is freshly cooked and which will help oneself to be happy after consuming is the sattvic of food and two of the important food aspects are the godugdha godugdha is the cow milk the milk from the cow which is supposed to have manaskara and ojaskara properties which means that they help to promote the good thought processes in the minds what if one is to help in the proper digestion mitahara is necessary and more water consumption is also advocated it helps to promote digestion and if the bodily processes of digestion and assimilation and excretion are going on well are we going to go on our path of searching for happiness in the form of pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan samadhi otherwise we will remain confided to that aspect where main kha raha hu mera pachan ho raha hai ya nahi pata nahi every time i go to my doctor i just have to talk about my indigestion issues will a person suffering from such issues even think of attaining bliss no trying to have good bubble moments every day will be a bliss for him so it is advocated that mitahara proper aahar and warm water are to be consumed Ayurveda advocates six course meal in the form of tea, the madura amla lavana, katu tikta kasha, and this sequence matters. If we see our traditional meals in any Indian household, it always began with some small amount of sweet. Khir, prasada chhi khir pailanda khau apan ahar ke pras. We never went for sweets as dessert. Puran Puri itself was a dessert, which was a main course of the meal. So, if we go back and at least adhere to these sequence of food and align our meal course with it, we are keeping our bodies healthy. Ash gourd, kohla, is one of the food items which is supposed to have prana dharana properties. it itself stays fresh for days and months together and the person on the yoga path is advocated to consume this ash gourd coming to the sutra from charaka samhita nityam hitahara vihara sevi samikshakari vishayeshu satta data samasatya parakshama ban what are the deeds that i am doing how am i behaving in the society vishayeshu asakta trying not to continuously run behind the pleasures that the senses give data samas satya parakshamava data one who is wanting to share his knowledge his belongings his persona with somebody else to make that person feel comfortable with this one i do a one dictum of ayurveda i would like to bring in brief work for all of you it is said that purva bhi bhashin tyag what is its meaning it says that once if you meet somebody make sure you are the one to initiate the conversation at least acknowledge the presence of the person who is there in front of you how many times does this happen if this is followed by everybody it will open the stars of sharing with each other and keep depression which is a major cause of 
concern now. At least we can activate. Satya Param, trying to speak and behave truthfully. Kshama Avan, the one who is ready to forgive for whatever wrongdoings that have happened. That is the biggest quality which one must try to inherit. Aapta Opa Tevi. Aapta is again an important concept in the Indian thought process. Aapta is that person who is beyond this worldly pleasure and would like only the well-being of the person who is coming to talk to them. The person who is coming to them to get some guidance. Here we can say, after our our elders, our our seniors, who are our well wishers. So the one who is seva, who is trying to be with them and trying to learn from them, is the October seva. Cha bhavati arogaha. So the person who is trying to adhere to all the above things will remain without any disease. Arogaha. The one who will have arogya and will be free from disease. So this shlok was a gist and it told us about the topic of both yoga and ahara in nutshell. And it was again from our after retires the Charaka Samhita. So this, maybe we all are charged up after this session on yoga and ahara, but it needs constant nurturing. The tiny child has an imagery of a plant on its shirt and the parents are watering it with lots of love. So for our good health and the well-being of the society, constant nurturing in the form of our thoughts and our good health is necessary. This is the Shanti part with which I would like to end my talk. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kashya Dukha Bhadhave One, we will try to be happy and keep everybody around us happy. So the take home message was that body is a mere tool that helps us in the path of well-being. So the tool also needs constant servicing and how one handles that tool is also very important. G-I-G-O, good input leads to good output. This is for our food as well as what we expose ourselves through reading or work. And last but not the least, live and let live. I would like to add a, an adjective here, live happily, at work and help others live happily and righteously as well. Not that I live happily with non-righteous kanda, but through my righteous kanda. This sutra again from Charaka Samhita, it says that Mrut Danda Chakra Sutra Adhya Kumbhakara Drute Yatha Navahanti Gunam Vaidya Drute Pada Trenyatha You have nice mud, you have a potter's heel, you have the stick to fashion the pot, but there is no water. Will you be able to have a nice pot? No. So, there is good food available. There are good people around you. But if the mind itself is not ready, is not opened up to all this, then it is of no use. I thank you all for your patient here. This imagery would also like to tell us something. We are like this lotus in a pond. Through the practice of yoga, we are that same lotus, but we are able to view ourselves and the surroundings with a very clear vision. So this last image was about this message to us. It was a real pleasure to be amongst all of you and share my thoughts of yoga I had for holistic health that I was fortunate and am fortunate to learn from my after and for the betterment of the society. Thank you all once again.
Thank you, Pansi Madam. Thank you for this wonderful and lively talk. And we thank Madam for sharing her holistic view on yoga and ahara and for the good practices of ahara, good and good living. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you for accepting our uh, invitation and giving this talk. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. And uh, now it will be my pleasure to introduce our second speaker, uh, Shri Shrikant Kulkarni. Shri Shrikant Kulkarni completed his master's in physics from Pune University. He has served the process control instrumentation industry over the globe for more than 40 years. He is a freelancer and consultant for instrumentation and control. He is the certified Six Sigma Black Belt and Management Consultant. Shikulkarni, I invite you to please give your talk. Definitely talking global, and definitely it goes in conjunction with what I am going to present. At the outset, I thank Dr. K. Paharathan for extending this invitation. Thank you, Dr. Munana, for the excellent coordination we are doing. And of course, thanks to Dr. Rajmi Deshpande, who actually introduced me to this special research institute. Well, something very unusual. Okay? Very unusual. In the sense, the subject which I am going to share with you, rather to talk with you, is about Kriya Yoga. So that is one something unusual. Second unusual thing is there are scientists sitting in front. So that is the second thing. The third unusual thing is the person standing before you who doesn't seem to belong to that particular community, nor by looks and nor by time. So I'm not a saint, I'm not a sadhu, I'm not a guru. I'm just a simple human being as you are. I'll start this session by asking one simple question. Has anyone seen energy? In whatever form, has anyone seen energy? Is 
very difficult to answer. But please not be uh, not seen a little tilt. I don't get you. I not have been seen, but it's spelled. Okay. So that's basically sort of an after effect of it. The electric bulb, it glows, but it has been energized. There is a current flowing, and that's the reason we are able to see the glow of the bulb. Right? So that is the energy. So what we mostly have, have been seeing is the after effect of the energy. There is wind energy, there is heat energy, and there are energy in various forms. There is a very interesting equation, what you see. I am a physicist, so naturally, I will be handling most of the issues from science point of view. Anybody recollects what this equation stands for? This must be during our school days. Nine standard tens calculus. A very universal equation. Which proves the theory of relativity. The theory of our existence on this earth. Anyone recollects what this equation means? That is the famous Albert Einstein's equation. Energy is equal to mc square. Okay, so we'll go a little bit of this later. There are various forms of energy. Energy which is stationary and energy which moves. It is called as a potential energy. And the energy which moves is called as a kinetic energy. So let me just explain. This is all related to energy. So let me explain what is the potential energy or what is the kinetic energy. Everyone knows the chin effect. Okay. Everybody knows the chin effect. Why is he you know, famous? Because of his act, because of his play. He has entertained the crowds, he has scored n number of centuries. So he had a potential and he delivered that potential in the form of a kinetic energy. So he had that potential, he delivered the energy, which is known as the kinetic energy. So that's the basic difference between the two energy forms. The energy which is stationary and the energy which moves. Just a little about myself. I've already uh, Introduced by Dr. Bandana. I did my master's in physics, a little bit more specialization in biophysics. So, more to do with some, uh, some part of medical science also. I'm about 65 years young. So, always good to say, you know, how young you are, rather than asking a person how old you are. Process control instrumentation goes along with physics, that is the basic science. I am a freelancer, offering consultative services for a management consultant and a Six Sigma. Various processes have been handled of food, pharmaceuticals, oil and gas, iron and steel, sugar plant, distillery, blueberry, and so on. Six Sigma is something to eliminate the defects to eliminate the variables in a real time process or in a business process, maybe a sales process, maybe a marketing process, maybe a research process, okay, maybe a documentation process. There are a lot of variables, there are a lot of defects in many of the processes. So we eliminate all those defects and purify this, the processes. The cause and effect, 
in a very famous term, the cause and what is the effect. Because there was spirituality, because there is the energy, because there are meditation techniques, because of the mantras, because of the Kundalini, all this came into existence. The quantum physics, engineering, instrumentation, process control, so everything goes in line with all these basics. Everyone is well aware of the universe. There is a universe outside. What we see is the sky. Panchatatva, Kapatyalavanto. The sky, water, earth, Agni. So these are the Panchatatva in the outward universe. Brahmand outside. Triyayo makes you look inside. What is inside? What is inside the human world? Or what is inside the living thing? Has anyone thought of this? What is the Brahmanda inside? What does it look inside? It comprises of the Panchatattva, whatever Panchatattvas are outside. The outer universe, the same panchatattvas are there inside the human body also. What you see in color, these are called as the chakras. These are called as the power centers. They supply power, different organs inside the body. Imagine. There are different villages and there is a powerhouse to power that particular village. If there is no power in the main line, obviously that particular village will not have electricity. Okay, this is as simple as that. I am trying to explain it in normal terms, in a simple terms. So, one realizes what he is doing. I try to expand this. I mean, it is not readable. All these figures, basically, they are top of electricity. What is the charge inside? It is a neutral charge, which is a positive charge, which is a negative charge. This is sort of an electrical body. So, what makes this universe outside? And a within survive. That's the energy. So that was the basic question which I asked in the start of the question. Has anyone seen energy? We always feel energy. Energy and the universe. As already explained, the famous Albert Einstein's equation E is equal to mc squared. We all know this. Where E is the energy, M is the mass, and C is the speed of light, and the potential and the kinetic motions of the energy. What is the physics of the universe spiritually? The equations still stand valid, where E is the energy, M is the mass, which is the potential, and C is the speed of light, that is the mind. We see here as a C square. This is more than C square. It can be either C raised to the power of 10 or C raised to the power of 20 because the mind acts fast. The mind works fast. The speed of mind is much. The speed of mind is much more than the speed of light. So that is the precise reason when we have to focus are doing for any kriya, hatha yoga or kriya yoga or pranaya, we have to be cautious of our mind and body.
तो दिस इज योगिक डेफिनेशन ऑफ डालबर्ट आइंस्टाइन इस वाले 2000 इयर्स बैक सिंस द ओरिजिन ऑफ द अर्थ डालबर्ट आइंस्टाइन इन 19 uh, 1900 एक्चुअली uh, आई मीन uh, ही इन्वेंटेड दिस इक्वेशन बट दिस वन्नास वी हैव ऑलरेडी प्रेजेंट इन द एंशिएंट हिस्ट्री If you have to transform this equation e is equal to mc square into the yogic equation, e is the energy which is the Oumkar energy, c is the mind, and n is the body. अपन मराठी में तो मंडो ना कि दोस्ता तो अपना करना अनि मन इताकर होत नहीं दोस्ता अपने लाती शक्ति में लगती. This precisely this equation proves. So e is equal to mc square. This Albert Einstein's equation. is still valid for any any energy obtaining process like we are doing every human body has different parts what is an aura what you see inside is the physical body there is the electrical body electrical body So you must have perceived when a person is admitted inside an hospital. The first thing the hospital nurse will put an IV. What is that? Fluid which flows inside. Either it is potassium, potassium or calcium. Right? Potassium and calcium basically generate that amount of electricity inside. So our body is an electrical body. The human body is full of electrical activity. chemical activity gives rise to the electrical conduct neurology what is neurology there are motor neurons there are motor neurons inside of a command is given from the brain if i have to move my finger the command is given from the brain and then all that entire electrical activity goes up to the tip of the finger at the finger this is called as the motor activity motor neuron they are called as motor neuron just like a chemical reactor just like a chemical reactor we have a nuclear reactor we have an atomic activity we have a photonic activity all these characteristics are there inside our human body you must have heard of protons electrons nucleus what are protons protons have a electrical characteristic if you energize them they will glow Just like phosphorus, okay. protons you give energy, it glows. So there is a presence of entire electromagnetic spectrum and the vibrational frequency. We are on the planet Earth. The Earth is revolving. It has its own frequency. Of seven point eighty three hertz, that is the Earth's frequency. There was a pandemic which started in two thousand nineteen. Covid, which still continues to go, and there was something unusual to place. Our Prime Minister Modi ji announced that okay, on a certain day at nine o'clock, switch off the lights. I mean, what kind of crap? Unfortunately, these things were not properly explained. People made a mock of it. Okay, people made a humor of it. So, what is this dhatana? It is basically in yogi pandit Brahmana. When the environmental frequency goes low, below seven point eight three three hertz, such pandemics come into existence. They become dominant for the month. They become dominant over the living things. So that was a precise objective to ban those thalis to raise that frequency in the environment. This is one of the measures. Unfortunately, as I said, I mean people made a mock of it, but the objective of having a brahmana was something different. Outside. The physical body. There is a layer, which is called as a 
ethnic body. All these layers are not visible to the human eye. But if you sit for meditation, suppose if I sit for a meditation, Kali is the Minyogdar Baslo. I do a meditation for about say an hour or something with deep concentration, with closed eyes. And on completing my meditation, I just switch over my place. So if I am sitting in this position down, I simply go and sit opposite to that particular place. For one or two seconds, you will be able to observe you will be able to observe one or two layers of your aura. Try it. Try doing it. But for that purpose, you have to rise up early. Do your little bit of meditation for whatever time is possible and try to look at your aura. You often say, a person, when you see a person, I hear you send some good vibes or bad vibe. vibrations. What are vibes? Those are vibrations. Each and every person has his own aura. You get a vibration. So what are those vibes? These vibes are precisely coming from all these layers of the world. So Kriya Yoga is a toolkit. It is a toolkit provided for each of us by the Almighty. When you go by go to buy a two, two wheeler or a four wheeler in a showroom, there is some basic toolkit which is given along with the vehicle, a spanner or something, a simple screwdriver. So that is the basic toolkit which is already been provided in our human. Unfortunately, we have never opened that toolkit. Okay. So it is a Inherent corrective toolkit provided by the Creator within the human body for self cure and the healing cure of human beings. You can cure yourself and you can impart your energy curing others. The origin basically started some two thousand years back. This Mahavatar Baba who invented Kriya Yoga. 2000 years back. And then later on, through different disciples, they came to Mumbai, the president of Mumbai. From her, it was passed on to Arvind Kulkarni. Arvind Kulkarni basically is the resident of uh, Mumbai. He is aged 70 now. He is a tax consultant by profession. By profession, he is just a tax consultant. But he came into contact with Sunanda Dai and she had accepted him as a disciple and imparted this entire knowledge to him. Arvindul Kwan is my guru. He is my tax consultant. So we have been interacting for the past almost about 37 years. He started some 25 years back. I started some about 11 years back. <laughs> but definitely, there is enough. Something comes in, and something is pushed out. So, what is the yoga? It is a support system for one to switch the mind into a meditative approach. It is a support system enriching the meditative state by controlling the breath. How to control the breath? There are seven defined energy centers. We have a deep look in all those energy centers termed as the chakras. What are these chakras? From biological point of view, I mean, there is a terminology called I vote. 
is a bunch of you know neurons coming together zygote they are forming us from some sort of a bunch and that bunch basically sends current to all the motor neurons the muladhar chakra so adhisthan chakra manipur chakra anahar chakra siddhi chakra adhya and so forth how they are placed you go into there are three energy carriers along the cns that is the central nervous system which are termed as sushumna nadi kida nadi and pingala how they originate where they come in so it is a scientific process to derive the daily rules of energy we are not sure we are into our karma okay so when nobly over the sambhalu ramane ko It is a scientific process to deliver, derive the daily dose of energy, tuning the mind and the body. E is equal to m c squared. That is the basic equation. This is the yogic body structure. These are the seven chakras. This is the spine. All these chakras are along the spine. The bottom chakra, which is called the root chakra. This is the Muladhar chakra. The Swadhisthana chakra below the abdomen. The Manipur chakra, the belly. The Anah chakra in the chest. The Vishuddhi chakra in your thoracic cavity. Anya chakra right between your eyebrows, and the Sahasra chakra on the top of that. So these are all the energy centers. These are the power houses, which are powering the motor neurons. If something goes wrong with the chakras, the ailments come. It could be a simple ailment, or it could be a some terminal ailment also. So there are almost about seventy-two thousand nadis, hundred and forty chakras. I have been by Dr. Dr. Nai, but I. The nadi originate and terminate at different places. This ida and pingala nai nadis. These originate along the eyes. They go along with the central nervous system, and they terminate at the bottom of the spine. The sushumna nadi, that is central one, it terminates at the top of the head. Okay. Each chakra is associated with different organs of the body: the pituitary gland, the pineal gland. Pineal gland is most important. It acts like an antenna. It acts like an antenna to catch those frequencies from the universe. So, a person already enlightened by kriya yoga sadhana, you will see drop swelling around on the forehead. His pineal glands are. Kundalini activation. Kriya Yoga is basically in three steps. One is activation of the chakras, that is setting those potential energy, moving that energy from bottom to top, and deriving the daily dose of energy. That is a three process Kriya Yoga. There are two gender of energies. The energy which comes from the body, from bottom to top, is called as the Kundalini. It is called as Shakti. It is a feminine energy. It is a feminine energy which is rooted at the root chakra. And then it rises up to the Sahasra chakra, and that is this top energy, which is called as Shakti. Sorry, this is the feminine energy Shakti, and this is Shiva. Shiva Shakti, I can't tell about it. These two energies are coming into contact with each other, and that's how the Shakti bar actually takes place. Once you Experience what is the Shakti path? 
obviously then you will get addicted to the science of kriya yoga when i started kriya yoga almost about 11 12 years back it was off and on so one day i used to do it two days ago after three days then i start feeling okay this to do something that's how it started with on and off but once in 2017 23rd of jan 2017 something happened something happened during the meditation something came in something got pushed off after that not a single day i missed kundalini energy resides at the bottom of the spine and travels like a serpent it travels like a serpent आगोडी वर्णा जो स्पाइन आहे त्या प्रमाणे कुंडलीने शक्तीचा प्रवास फ्रॉम फिजिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्ह्यू इफ आई टेल यू दीज आर ऑल द चक्रस आर लाइट लाइट चुमा कशी असते बस if all lights are glowing is the current is going from the power source to the top if one of the bulb is fused alatas nahi hai obviously the bulbs are head in the line they are not going to glow okay so it is very essential that all these chakras are activated how to activate those chakras we come to that clear up to this point If you have any questions, you can ask the question any time. No issues. The union of energies. When the Kundalini Shakti rises at the top of the head, that is the feminine energy. The male energy is the Shiva. That basically causes. It is an. it is very difficult to explain in words what is the shakti path what has to experience when you start doing kriya yoga daily maybe within a month's time or two months time you will get a glimpse of what is the shakti path but then one has to maintain that sort of mystic discipline you have to get up early rat brahma murta the brahma murta starts from 3:40 a up to 5:30 why that brahma So that energy is available at that particular time. From medical point of view, you have a lot of supply ozone in the air. O3, not O2. It's O3, and ozone is used in the body to purify the blood. It decarbonizes the blood. All the carbon content is shed off. So it is a union of two energies or a handshake of two energies termed as Shakti Path. Now we come to what is the heart of the ayo. How the chakras are activated. How the kundalini is moved. Mantra dar like al alankar. Parega ma padani sarvan. Ye alankar kya? So those mantra dar like alankar. They are having certain frequencies. They are having certain vibrations. When we chant those mantras, those frequencies interact. or make an impact on that particular chakra there are different mantras for different chakras there are seven chakra there are seven mantras mantras are in two form the mula mantra and the bija mantra mula mantra is like a big slow and the bija mantra is just a alpha what you see here is the root chakra the root chakra this is the mula mantra what is the mula mantra it says om sham shri shu shri lakshmi om guru guru swaha it may sound absurd now but when you sit meditation 
when you chant these mantras, see the impact that it holds. So this is called as the Mula Mantra. And what you see here, Lam, that is called as the Bija Mantra. What is the Bija Mantra? It is more powerful than the Mula Mantra. You say Lam, you feel where the impact goes. You say Hum, you see where the impact goes. Okay, you say yam, you see where the impact. So all these bija mantras and mula mantras are designed in a fashion. Though those frequencies basically interact with those chakras, and that's how the chakras are active. From a physics point of view, frequency of the root chakra is somewhere around 490 terahertz. The top chakra is somewhere around 900 terahertz. And then use of Nagamra, which I already explained to you. Musical chords, which basically sets the resonance. It's a guided frequency. It's a guided frequency to chant these mantras in that particular magnitude, in that particular wave. Wood has a multi dimension. We are aware of three dimensions on the earth. We have length, we have breadth, and we have breadth. There is the fourth dimension, which is known as the time, time element. Omkar has 16 dimensions. It can move in any media. It can move in vacuum. If you have heard on the NASA side, the sound of the universe, the sound of the Earth planet, it rhymes with the home. So that is the sound of the universe. Omkar is also used as the healing mantra. So if I have to impart energy to someone sitting in Mumbai during a meditation, I visualize that person in front of me and the etheric body or the astral body that reaches to that person. And impart that attention. To come to that level, it needs a sadhana, a pretty long sadhana. But it's a worth experience. Once we experience that, we we'll start killing everyone, actually. It starts with step one and two. Activation of chakra. So establishing the potential energy. We are establishing the potential powerhouses. That is the first phase. We are establishing the powerhouses first. The potential energy, that is the power centers, by utilizing both the Mula Mantra and the Bicha Mantra. Once you complete this cycle, obviously you need to clean up. There is a cleansing process. So if you want to wash it, you hold it upside down, near the tap, you don't know. And the So that is a cleansing process. That is called as a backwash. It is called as a backwash. So this is the this cleansing is basically a backwash. Once we complete these cycles. Uh, of uh, step one and step two, utilizing the Bija Mukula Mantra and Bija Mantra, then we observe a cleansing cycle. This goes about for about two months. Step one, one month, step two, the second month. And there is no Saturday, Sunday off, it is <laughs> every day of it. Step three. We have established the potential energy. Now we need to activate it. We need to activate this potential energy by using only the Bija mantras. And then we reach to a meditative stage. Once we have cleans, cleaned all, all our chakra, we have activated all our chakra. Naturally, we go into the meditative stage very peacefully. Something very interesting to observe here, the breath control. You take a breath, everyone takes a breath. 
Everyone is used to the, the technique. Hold your breath for some time and release the breath. That is called as a kumbha. That is a kumbha in uh, Priya Yoga. That pause or that gap. We will try to enlarge the gap. It is very easy when you take a breath, hold it, you um, uh, retain that breath for say about a minute or so, and then you release the breath. That is comparatively very simple. But observing a kumbhat at the downward area, you release the breath and then hold that breath. You won't be able to hold that breath more than 10 seconds, not more than 5 seconds also. But that precisely is a breath control. If you do this meditation daily, the entire root chakra will be active. प्रॉब्लम प्रॉब्लम Establish the potential energy power centers. So we open it again. Then we have activated those power centers. Okay. All these power centers are now activated. Now we need to raise this energy from the root chakra to the crown chakra. This is the root chakra. This is the crown chakra. Now we that is the Kundalini trap. When will this Kundalini raise? From electrical point of view. If these power centers are all, all power centers are working, only then the current from this point to this point will go. Otherwise, not. Kundalini activation basically requires the first condition is all the chakras need to be charged. They need to be recharged. They need to be cleansed. That's the basic criteria. So this is part one. Potential energy is activated. Second is we are raising this energy from bottom to top, which is called as the kinetic energy. That is the level four. Very interestingly, a stage for DNA activation and Kundalini awakening. We are awakening the Kundalini, which is resident at the Muladha chakra, at the root chakra. DNA, everyone knows. Okay, there are twelve strands of DNA in the human body. Two strands. What are these strands? Those strands are of protein or amino acids. Two strands by the creator, they are already encrypted. You can't do anything. But if someone wants to change his or her destiny, which is very difficult, one can still do that. On Gora Tapasya Jana Mundu, that is possible. In Kalala, the mineral disease is Kalala. He wants to come out of that. But then there needs a change in the DNA, DNA structure, and only Kundalini awakening can change your DNA. Who will change that? Level five. We have activated now the kinetic energy within the Kundalini through the equi potential surfaces. All these chakras are now. They are charged. They are electrically active. They are conducting, and then we go into a meditative stage. This meditative stage is something different. We are in a mode of total surrender. We are in a mode of total surrender. It is not meditation. I am not adu adu or that. I am not going to do For hours together, we can sit into a meditation without feeling. The environment around. That is the last stage of PIO. Attaining the last stage of PIO. That means the Kundalini travel through the Sushum Nadi. This central Nadi, subtle Nadi, it gets completely open. The Kundalini shakti raises from this point to this point. Now the task is very simple. For the task. 
derive that energy from the universe. Once you have reached this stage, Shiva Shakti, Milab Jo hai, Shiva Ani Shakti ka Milab Jo ka kacha var, that union of two energies takes place and that experience of Shakti ka. That's how the eye of science works. Nada Brahma, as I explained already, Nada Brahma is something what you see is each and every rod has a Vadi Swar, Savadi Swar, Uparja Swar. There are certain dominant Swar, Karigma Badani Sata, Ipana, Pumali Ahe, Karama Shatama, Yuramana, Ekumadhyam, Shuddhamana. Each rod is basically designed for Muladhar Chakra, which is Shantra. Okay, the Jamadam, Jum, Shuddhamam, Shuddhamam, Padahe, Adi, Yuramam, Padahe. But when you hear that rod, you feel that impact on that particular place at the bottom of the spine. Yaman Raga, for example, it interacts with the Swadish Shantra. Each and every Ra has a science which Ra cures Vicha, or rather, which Ra energizes Vicha. At the early morning hours, if you try to hear the Durga Raga or Jayavita, it cannot appeal you, it cannot interact with those particular Chakra. But if you try with Ram Kalyan, you try with Yaman, you try with Ahir Gundra, you will feel that impact. From science point of view, this is a visible spectrum. So what is the measurement? When it is a science, there has to be some measurement, right? There has to be some measurement. How do you know whether my ch chakras are activated or not? How do I ensure that? Each chakra has its own color. It has a specific bandwidth. It has a specific wavelength. We have already conducted one experiment, experiment in our school days. A prism. Glass of prism. When white light passes, there are a band of seven colors. Indra Dhanusha Japan Doctor. Rainbow. So there is a rainbow inside. The Muladhar Chakra, it starts from this color and it ends up to this color. So when you do, do this Vya Yoga daily, you will start observing the band of colors inside. You will start observing the band of colors inside. That is the measurement, okay, whatever you are doing, if you are doing it correct. So this is the measurement. And there are many measurements, tips and tricks available in Vya Yoga, which you can control yourself. There is no need of guru, there is no need of any sadhu. It is basically self experimenting. But once you have learned the core of where you are, you can do it yourself. So, this is the band of the spectrum. Game Jor, the violet, the color band, the same color band is there and available inside. So when it's a science, it has to have a measurement. The rainbow of colors. But that is one of the measurements that all your chakras are activated. Movement of the chakra, you will start feeling that something is swirling around, something is moving around. Body clock activation. It is a very interesting phenomenon. A body clock. How does the body clock work? You don't need an alarm. Once you start doing this uh, sadhana daily, you don't need an alarm because your mind wakes up much faster than your body. There are quick tests, thermal shocks, which you can do it yourself at home. Simple. Just rub your palms hard as possible. There will be a lot of heat generated. And just place those palms on particular chakras, on those seven places. Just see how you feel. If you feel pleasant, means you are good at that particular surrounding. If 
some problem is there, you will feel different. You will feel different. It is a quick test whether your spine, the, your, whether your central nervous system is intact, whether your central nervous system is conducting. So that is a quick test. Rub your palms hard as possible, generate that heat and place that palm on those particular chakra points along the spine. Bare touch, bare skin touch, not from the clothes. So do it at home and uh, in the early hours. Feel the difference. There, feel where you stand. Feel where you stand. Quick test, Amrut. What is Amrut on earth? Why are you doing? Why do you perform this sadhana daily? Just put a glass of water in front of. You. So whatever sanskars you are doing on your body, the same sanskars you are doing on the glass. Of water. After doing the meditation, just gulp up that water from the glass. See how different it is. So that is one of the major. Whether your meditation was perfect, whether your sadhana was perfect, so that is one of the measurement. Most important thing is intuitions. Power of intuitions is unexplainable. You can clearly see the road ahead. You can clearly visualize the road ahead. They start coming to you, the intuitions start coming to you. But one has to experience them. One has to experience them. Behavioral changes. Obviously, your spouse will be the best person to see the change within you. So, spouse verified is always a good measure whether there are changes in your behavior. Change in the thought process. This is a very important aspect. This brings in a lot of positivity and it pushes out the entire negativity. In your profession, when wherever you need to have, whenever you need to take over a decision, the power of intuition plays a very important You are in a much better place or an environment to take a decision. So mental, physical, divine, spiritual, medical fitness, of course, comes to reality. Just like Salary commensurates with your qualification and experience. Obviously, results from your commensurate with respect to your efforts and beliefs. This forms your conviction. The more you think on this, the more you think on belief. How is the belief form? Very simple phenomenon. How is the belief form? Belief is equal to thoughts multiplied by frequency. Good thoughts, keep on remunerating those uh, uh, good thoughts, a good belief is formed. If you think on a bad thought and keep on thinking on the bad thought, that belief is formed. That's how a belief is formed. Why can't I get times? Because it sinks into your subconscious mind. It sinks into your subconscious mind. So that's how our belief is formed. That was all about Kriya Yoga. What I can say, I mean, one needs to practice. It is basically talking to yourself. When you sit for meditation, it is like talking to yourself. As you start improving on your meditation, you will be talking to some power somehow. Definitely. That's all from me and thank you for listening so patiently. that I wanted to conduct one experiment. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
<clears throat> pirate frequency, which I said, okay, Omkar, everyone knows. But how to pronounce an Omkar? How to pronounce an Omkar? We'll just have a quick demo, okay? People sitting on the right and people sitting on the left. People sitting on the right will chant Omkar, okay? Once or twice, without any aid. And that's the people sitting on the left will chant Omkar, okay? Once or twice. But for chanting the Omkar, just sit erect. The spine should be perpendicular to the ground, okay? And we will see what is the effect. Focus box. Shall we start? People sitting on my right, just chant Omkar the way you do, normal. Okay? No bounds, no conditions. Just chant Omkar the way you do, whenever, whenever you do. You can start, someone starts and then for someone follows. Okay. Say, uh, how do you pronounce Omkar during uh, your sadhana? Upon Mantona, when the Arti Kartana upon Omkar Mantro, me Omkar Kase Manta. Bit louder. Perfect, wonderful. People sitting on the left now. Keep your eyes closed. What difference you so, was it harmonious? Was the chanting harmonious? No, but the pratyekat's scale was different. The pratyekat's voice was different. The pratyekat's swar was different. Why is it all ekatra andya sati kai? So, what is what is required to bring all those voices together to make a harmonious sound? That is. A frequency of 432 hertz, which resonates with the earth frequency. Mehi frequency put liya ste, Anpura, Tambora, Harmonium, Violin hai. All these instruments are designed at a frequency of 432 hertz. This is a guided meditation. You use these particular instruments along with you, and then you pronounce the Omkar the effect is entirely different. So we will have a joint, everyone jointly now, no left and right, everyone jointly.
With this chanting of Omkar, there are a lot of vibrations that create on the PNS, that is the peripheral nervous system. Those vibrations you can sense now. Just move your palms on your eyes slowly. Just give a feather touch. Eyes, your cheeks, your ears. Throat, and then press those palms on your right and open your eyes within your palms. There are minute vibrations which are created on the hands. Just connecting at uh, about five or six times. Little effect. Amount of energy what you have. That is precisely the daily Once you complete the cycle, once the linear end of the Shaktika which flows from. It is an experience. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for this energizing talk and uh, demystifying the science behind Kriya Yoga. Thank you very much for taking out the time from your lecture schedule and coming and giving this talk at ARN. So thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And we have 
totally benefited from these two talks from the talk by Dr. Maithili in the morning for Mahara and Yoga. Thank you, sir, from your talk. Okay. Thank, you Thank, you. Thank you very much. And uh, I have a little announcement to make for tomorrow's program. Uh, kindly assemble in our open auditorium at 9.45 because we will be having the yoga workshop in the open auditorium. So with this, I will uh, end the program and I request Dr. Uh, Neha Vishnu to kindly propose the vote of thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. I uh, hope after listening to this wonderful talks, we all would implement this habit of doing yoga in our daily routine to keep ourselves free and healthy. And uh, here, we come to an end of this program. On behalf of Agartha Research Institute, I would like to thank our today's guests, uh, Dr. Michael Nai and uh, Sri Srikant Kulkarni for uh, sparing their time through this occasion. Uh, we extend our sincere thanks to our uh, respected director, sir, uh, Dr. Uh, Prashant Dakepartwa, for his leading support and uh, encouragement. Uh, thanks to our social media team for uh, making this program live on the social media handles. And uh, once again, thank you all for your precious service. Thank you so much.